ょっと俺味見するの味見汁まぶたしてわさびみんなお客さんが持ってきてくれるプレゼントしてくれるこれ全部マイわさびマイわさびマイわさび普段は基本的にはシャリがないと食べないんですよそれなぜかっていうとこうマグロって気温ごとに変化をしていくじゃないですかその変化を見るってこととあとは例えばその日だったら今日の味はどんな味だろうっていうのとちょっと新しいうちって魚ってあんまり変わらないんだけど1日2日3日経ってくるとその魚の味って出てくるんですよでそのマグロってニシンを食べるんですよ3日ぐらいしてニシン消費しますマグロって何の味って絶対その味なんでこれ下田でなんで日本のマグロがうまいかって言ったら日本の近海のマグロが美味しいかって言ったら日本の小魚って美味しいでしょ味にしてもイワシにしてもサバにしてもイカにしてもブリにしてもそれを食べるがすっごく美味しくなるんですよ酢飯にあるマグロっていうのはどうなのすごく大事な一つがこう一つ大事なことなんですよそういういろんな場面に合わせて出すのが僕の仕事なんですよ、えー、父親がもしお前がマグロ屋をやりたいと言うんであれば独立をするということで、えー、僕は大学になってきて、えー、うちの父親と、えー、今から35年前、えー、起業したのがマグロ屋としての始まりだしあの好きなことなんで多分皆さんもそうだと思うんだけど好きなことって自分でやるじゃないですか嫌いなことって人に教わるだけだけどまあマグロって本当好きだやるじゃないですか嫌いなことって人に教わるだけだけどまあマグロって本当好きだったんでだから自分で本当勉強しましたね、うん Один для всего тела. Мультитример Philips серии 7000. Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV, where we are going to be talking about the easiest list pieces. Kind of a joke, there aren't really any easy list pieces, but we are going to talk about the easiest. So, in list terms, that's going to be late, intermediate, early, advanced music. So, I think you need to be around at least a grade six level before attempting any of these. But if some of you are at that level and you're wanting to get into the music list without, you know, trying to attempt some of his craziest, most difficult pieces ever, or if you want some,、uh, you know, guidance on which are the crazy, difficult pieces to avoid, That's what this video is about. I'm going to be talking about two different grading systems in this video as well, just to give you some context. So, I'll be talking about the RCM grades. I've talked about the RCM on this channel before, the Royal Conservatory of Music. And I will be using the Henley ranking system, which I've also talked about on this channel. So, if you have no idea what that is, you might want to check those videos out first. Anyway, let's get started. The easiest way to discuss lists pieces are to divide them into categories, which are the following. We have his etudes, we have the years of pilgrimage, the Hungarian pieces, consolations, little piano pieces, the valses, the Liebestrom, the poetic and religious harmonies, and then some, just a few miscellaneous pieces as well. So, what we're going to do in this video is go through each category one by one and see if there are any easier pieces in each of those categories. And then at the very end of this video, we'll do a summary of the easiest pieces that we can find in each category. All of this information is also going to be over on the blog, so check that out in the description bar below、uh, the video and you'll have access to all this information. This has a lot of collections of etudes, including the two concert etudes, transcendental etudes. 
three concert etudes, grand etudes. to Paganini and 12 etudes. So etudes are studies, and among these collections of studies, uh, they're, they're extremely difficult. The vast majority of them are marked at um, an RCM ARCT level, which is basically the highest level there is. And just to give you perspective with Henley, for example, the three concert etudes are, are between Henley's seven and eight. And just to give you perspective on that, Henley's highest rating is nine. So the transcendental etudes, which are quite well known, are really, really, really high level. They're some of the most difficult music that exists in piano repertoire. The exception to this is the third etude from the Transcendental Etude set, which is at about an RCM grade 10 level, still for the advanced student, but probably the most approachable of the set. And really the only etude that's approachable to the late intermediate and early advanced student is the fourth etude from his uh, 12 etude set. It's around an RCM 8 level, so again, it's it's nowhere in the ballpark of easy, mm -hmm. but uh, it's doable, and you might also want to check out some of the etudes from the 12 etudes collection. Next up are the Years of Pilgrimage collections, of which there are three, and these were lists, impressions of Switzerland, detailing its experiences with the landscape and the countryside, and for the most part, they're for advanced students. I mean, that's going to be the running theme for most of Liszt's music, uh, most of these are going to be around a grade 10 to ARTT level, but there are a couple pieces within these sets that are a little bit more approachable, including the ones that you see detailed on the page here, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to butcher the, the French. I will let you, <laughs> I'll let you check out that list on your own. And again, like I mentioned before, all of this is going to be over on the blog too, if you want a complete list. So for his Hungarian pieces, there are a couple categories here. He has a collection of five Hungarian folk songs, which are doable for the advancing students at around a level eight. Still not easy, but the remainder of his Hungarian tunes are the various Hungarian rhapsodies, some of which are quite famous, but they're also some of the highest level pieces out there. Henley ranks them between levels eight and nine, which again is extremely difficult repertoire. Then we have his consolations, which are of some consolation to us common folk trying to learn them. Sorry, bad pun. So basically, they're not necessarily easy, but they're at least accessible, they're intermediate level. The first consolation is probably the easiest. It's at an RCM grade eight level, which is early advanced. And Henley ranks this one as level four, so right in the middle on the easier side. Uh, probably the most popular consolation, though, is the third one, which is a little bit more difficult at an RCM grade 10 level. Henley ranks it at four to five. Um, there are six consolations in total, and they progress in difficulty from level four to five to six. So if you're an early advanced student, this might be a good collection for you to check out. Another approachable collection is lists five piano pieces, S192. Um, these don't exist on Henley or the RCM syllabus because they're less known, but they're probably all around a grade seven or eight level, probably Henley three to four. I'm guessing, I mean, that's not an official thing, but that would be my estimation. Uh, these might even be the best gateway pieces to list, just because they're potentially the easiest. Next up are lists Forgotten Waltzes S215. This is a collection of four waltzes that are around a grade 10 to ARCT level uh, via the RCM of Music. And Henley ranks them between level 6 to 7, so they're pretty challenging. I honestly avoid these until you're a pretty advanced student. Um, with one exception, possibly, and that would be the first valse, which also happens to be the most popular. It's the easiest of the bunch, but again, it's it's not easy. It's still around a grade 10 level. Lists Liebestrom are great. I actually did a full analysis video on these a while back, so check that out if you'd like to get more in-depth into these three nocturnes. They're definitely worth checking out. But, are they easy? No. <laughs> the most doable one is the second one at a Henley level 5 to 6 or RCM 10. Um, the third Liebestrom is the one that's the most famous, but it's also the most difficult of the entire <laughs> set. So avoid these until you're well into your advanced piano levels. Liszt's collection of short pieces, his religious and poetic harmonies, is actually one of the only approachable collections for late intermediate to early advanced students. Mm -hmm. And it has some of his so-called simplest pieces. 
Among those are Peter Noster, Ave Maria, and uh, Him de la Font et Son Reveil. And I just want to give a shout out to the funeral piece, which is pretty famous, but it's also pretty difficult. So um, sometimes I like bringing attention to famous pieces just to give you guys a perspective on how tough it is. And this is one of those that you might want to leave alone for a while. There are also some individual pieces from Liszt worth mentioning. So his Great Clouds is awesome and moody and doable. It's around an RC of grade seven. And if I were to guess the Henley ranking, because I, I couldn't find it on Henley's website, I'd say it'd be around level three yeah. to four. And then another one around the same level is called Farewell. And it's only two pages, and it's lovely. It's, it's very mournful, um, definitely worth checking out. And there are some other famous individual pieces like the Mephisto Waltz. However, this one again is quite a big challenge. You might, might want to leave that one alone until you're a more advanced piano player. So after all of that and going through all of the different categories, talking about the difficulty levels of each collection, I've come up with a list of nine pieces and or one of them's the collection, one of them's the whole five piano pieces, S192 collection. Uh, but for the most part, these are just nine pieces that I consider to be the easiest. And I've ordered them from easiest to most difficult. They started around a Henley level three to four, which is around a grade seven level, uh, late intermediate. So in order to tackle the easiest list, you're probably going to need to have a, a, a minimum of a few years piano under your belt. Usually, if I'm teaching adult students, they've been playing piano for probably a good five years before getting to some of these. But it really depends on who you are, your learning style, how much you're putting in. It might take longer, it might take less time for you. And that is all for today's video. As I've mentioned several times kind of throughout this, definitely check out the blog posts associated with this video because you'll have all the lists and everything that I reference in this video you'll be able to find there if you're looking for some list pieces to get into. Thank you for everyone who helps. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So today I wanted to do a video where we discuss Chopin's easiest piano pieces, but by no stretch of the imagination is Chopin easy at all. At best, his music starts at an intermediate level and then works up to very, very advanced. This video was a request, and I just wanted to share the songs I teach to my students when they first want to get into Chopin and just kind of go through all of his genres. For this video, I'm going to be referring to the RCM grades, the Royal Conservatory of Music. So if I say, you know, grade 10, that would be a very, very high level. And it's pretty similar to the ABRSM, except the ABRSM doesn't go quite as high. ABRSM only goes up to 8. So, you know, grade 8 ABRSM, grade 10 RCM will be pretty equivalent to so, Anyway, I just wanted to give you that heads up. Let's get started. I think the easiest way to do this video is to break his composition such as genre categories, kind of like I have up here with his like preludes, waltzes, polonaises, and so forth. So we are going to talk about each of these categories in turn and which pieces in those categories are the most doable and then which pieces are best avoided when you're starting Chopin. You can kind of, I, I did the green check marks and the red X's and stuff to give you a sense of which ones to start with and which ones to avoid. If you're not sure what level you're at and you're not sure if you're like ready to get into Chopin at that like kind of later intermediate level, start by learning one of his easiest songs, which we'll talk about in just a second here. If it is like a huge struggle and you're just like gritting your teeth to get through it, then put it aside, work on some other music for a while, and then come back to it later. Chopin does take time. Um, for the most part, like three years piano experience would be like my general estimate before even like attempting to play Chopin. Everyone's different, but a really good starting point when you're learning Chopin are the preludes because the easiest three preludes that we have here are all pretty famous. You might have even heard at least one of them before. And another good thing about them too is that they're all pretty short. They're all about a page in length. So these are the most approachable. A lot of the preludes seem like they're approachable because a lot of them are short, like a page or two, but some of them are really scary, like especially ones like this. I'm not gonna list like all the scary preludes because there's quite a few of them, but these ones are a really good starting point. One of the very first Chopin teachers I really like teaching my students is his waltz in A minor because it's really well known, it's really approachable, and it has like some fancy little show up parts too. So I think this one actually seems like it's more difficult than it is, but beyond that, his waltzes aren't really easy at all. I mean, it's like all of Chopin's music, it's not really easy, but some of the best ones like his opus, 64 uh, waltzes, which is like the minute waltz and the waltz in C-sharp minor and those. They're at about a grade 9 level, as is some of like his other best ones, but 
Chopin is so nuanced in his style that it's really only a good idea to try the harder ones, like the Opus 64 ones, once you've been like thoroughly acquainted with his style. So these ones here are his easiest ones. And I want to make a note on the Grand Valse Brilliance to wait for later, because this is an ARCT level piece. I don't know why I didn't write that down. And I think the thing about this one that gets people is a lot of people try to learn it and then realize it's extremely difficult because it, it doesn't always sound like it's super crazy because it's a really catchy song. So that's just a warning I want to throw out there. Also, just a side note in case you're wondering, I'll be linking a list of all of these at the bottom in my blog post. So if you are you don't have to like memorize what's on the screen or anything, I just kind of want to go through with it quickly. So with the exception of a few polonaises like these ones right here, most of Chopin's polonaises are really advanced. They're generally beyond the waltzes. There are a lot of them that are a grade 10 level and even beyond that. His easiest polonaises as well were all published posthumously. That's what this like post H means and apparently like spell check is telling me that this is bad. Post huh is not a word. So I don't know if that impacts things for you when you're learning. Some people don't like learning pieces that were composed by someone after they died because for one reason or another, the composer oftentimes didn't choose to publish those in his lifetime. Like maybe Chopin was unsatisfied with them or they just kind of got forgotten. But all the same, these are some good options. None of Chopin's mazurkas are at all particularly easy. You'd, you'd honestly be better off starting off with the easier preludes and waltzes first. But once you've got a few Chopin pieces under your belt, these are a few good ones that you can move on to. They're all at a grade 8 level. And overall, his mazurkas are mid-range pieces. They're like early advanced to advanced, basically between like a grade 8 and grade 10 level. Chopin's Nocturnes are awesome, but they're almost entirely out of reach until you're at at least an early advanced level. The range and difficulty for the Nocturnes are anywhere between grade 9 and ARCT, which is basically the highest level. There is one Nocturne you can attempt if you've had success with some of the previous Chopin suggestions though, and that's the Nocturne in G minor. And anything beyond that, like honestly, just save them for later. So now we're going to take a look at some of the categories that you really don't even want to look at unless you are quite advanced at piano. Honestly, don't even bother. Don't even look at his etudes. With the exception of there's there's one etude that's at a grade 10 level. It's the F minor one, number two. But all of the other ones are A or C T level, which is basically like as hard as it gets in piano. These etudes are up there with some of the most difficult piano repertoire of all time. So save these pieces for like, you know, dreams and eventual goals. The ballads are just as challenging as the etudes are all at an ARCT level. And I know they're beautiful and amazing, but they're completely out of reach to all but the most advanced players. Some other very famous Chopin pieces like his Fantasy Impromptu or any of the Impromptus or his Scherzos are all extremely difficult again. So like the others, like the etudes and the ballads, they're all at around an ARCT level. And they are really, really tough. Save these ones for when you're a master. So now that we've looked at Chopin's main categories, let's look at his top five easiest songs in all the categories combined. So we're going to go in e order from easiest to hardest, starting with the prelude in C minor. Now I think this one's the easiest of the bunch just because it's the shortest. So it's about half a page long and it's really, really, really slow. So you have lots of time to think about what you're doing. But if you have smaller hands, this might not be the one for you because there's a lot of like four note chords and stuff like that. Next, we've got the waltz in A minor, which is actually one of my favorite ones to teach to beginners to Chopin. Um, this is actually, even before the prelude in C minor, I'll often teach this one just because it's so familiar and it actually sounds really, really impressive, even though it's not as, I don't know, it's not as difficult as it sounds. Then we've got the prelude in E minor, which is a really chord heavy song. It's not too bad though, if you're pretty good at chords. I always found this one really easy to sight read overall, especially because the right hand is pretty sparse. There's not a lot going on in it. There's a pretty tough part in the middle, but honestly, the hardest part about this song is just like the mood. It's so, uh, there's so much repetition in the chords that it's hard to create like a, a sense of dynamic and movement in it. And then our last two are both polonaises, which are really similar in the difficulty. I just think this one's a little bit easier. There's some fast arpeggios and movement and stuff though, which I think makes it more difficult than the prelude that we just talked about. And lastly, the B flat major polonaise, which is similar to the fourth one. It just has a little bit more movements and things like rocking octaves in the left hand, which is why I think it's a little bit harder. And here's the complete list. Mm-hmm. 
So we can move. Вот надо выйти.
Ух ты, утяр, утяр, утяр. Все нормально, все нормально. Пока. Пока, иду я, пока.